Hello, everyone. We are live here in New York City. Oracle Red Bull Racing is here today to launch their 2023 season and give you, the fans, an up-close and personal look at the RB19. Hello, everyone. I'm Marty Smith, and joining me today is the lovely Giselle Zarzor. How'd I do? Uh, I'm yeah, working, I'm I'm do you're on. doing great. I'm working on that. I'm working yeah. on that. We can already feel the energy in the room. It is electric. We have so much to share over the next hour. Today, you'll hear from two-time world champion Max Verstappen. Let's hear it for Max, everybody. What a tremendous career is unfolding for him. And of course, today, we have the Mexican Minister of Defense himself, Mr. Sergio Perez, a.k.a. Checo. Checo is A lot of here. Mexicans here, huh? I know, I love it. Yeah. A lot of Checo fans. After the official announcement in 2022, we're finally welcoming home eight-time Grand Prix winner Daniel Ricciardo is back with Oracle Red Bull for 2023 after four long years away. Hey, Marty. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. Let me tell you that we'll also be joined by team principal and CEO Christian Horner. We will have a first look at the new team kit for 2023 and some very special guests. Of course, it wouldn't be a season launch without a sneak peek at the RB19. Stay tuned because this is going to be quite the show. The Formula One team defended its driver championship with Max Verstappen. The 25-year-old won a record-breaking 15 races last year, including nine of the last 11 races. Max set the new mark for the most wins in an F1 season. What an unbelievable year. Tremendous year in 2022 for Max. Oracle Red Bull Racing also won the Constructors' Championship in 2022 and were the only team to have both cars start in the top four in every Grand Prix last season. I think we'd all agree 2022 was a fantastic year to say the least. I want to take a moment to thank the thousands of fans around the globe who are streaming this event today. Wherever you're watching from today, you're in for quite a treat. Over the next hour, we'll take you into the world of Oracle Red Bull Racing. We'll cover where we've been, where we're going, and everything in between. As always, a massive hello to our members of the paddock and those streaming the event online. A reminder for you. All these can be found at redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock. The paddock is Oracle Red Bull Racing fantastic loyalty platform where fans can earn points, claim rewards, and enter unique competition. But much more on that later. Those eagle eye viewers may notice hidden paddock codes throughout the show. A way to redeem points and prize online. One thing that's always true of the Oracle Red Bull Racing team their willingness to take the road less traveled. What about freedom? From Las Vegas streets, desert heat to Miami Beach, from sea to shining sea. You ready to get started? Oracle Red Bull Racing has been exploring this land before there were roads. Without question, 
Nobody pushes the limits quite like Oracle Red Bull. What a tremendous year once again in 2022, not only achieving back-to-back -back driver championships, but also the constructor championship. It's wonderful to be here in New York with all of you today. Thank all of you here in the live audience for coming out. And we'll start the day, come on out, brother, with team principal and CEO of Oracle Red Bull Racing, Christian Horner. Great to see you, brother. Good morning. Congratulations on the tremendous success you guys have achieved at Oracle Red Bull. We are all so excited to be here in New York. So let's start right there. What is your impression of us unveiling the car today and, and, and opening the season here in New York? Well, look, it's, it's incredibly special to be here, you know, in the Big Apple, in, in the U.S., in New York. It's playing, uh, you know, the U.S. is playing such a big role in Formula One these days. Three Grand Prix, you know, Las Vegas coming onto the calendar as well this year. So it seemed only fitting, um, you know, to unveil the RB19 and our, our plans for the season ahead you know, here, in, here in New York City. It is unbelievable the growth of Formula One in the United States, even over the past couple of years. How do you describe it? It's been massive, and uh, you know, it's just been fantastic to see the U.S. really embracing Formula One. And uh, you know, we started with a race in Austin, and then Miami introduced last year, uh, and of course Vegas coming this year. And we're seeing the U.S. really engaging, uh, you know, in Formula One and everything that's going on. We're seeing a much younger demographic, a much younger fan base coming into the sport as well. And uh, you know, we now have so many U.S. partners. It's uh, it's a really exciting time for Formula One and you know, to particularly in, uh, in the United States. And the team performed extremely well, both in Austin and in Miami. What were the keys to you guys doing so well here in the U.S.? Um, well, look, all races carry the same points, but they were two big races that we wanted to win. And Miami being the first race was a, a super tight race. And I think that, uh, you know, that was a, a big race for Max to win, a really tight race. And then, of course, in Austin, it was a, a weekend that was, uh, you know, quite an emotional weekend. We lost our founder and chairman, Dietrich Mateschitz, and uh, you know, we had the opportunity to win the Constructors' Championship for the first time in eight years. And uh, on Sunday, you know, Max winning that race, uh, you know, Checo uh, up there on the podium as well, converted those points to, to win the, uh, and bring home that Constructors' Championship. You noted the co-founder of Red Bull, Dietrich Mateschitz. Uh, I know you had quite a relationship with him. How do you define the emotion that you guys were experiencing there in Austin? And what is his influence? Well, of course, he was a, a huge influence in everything that we did. It was his passion, uh, not just within Red Bull Racing, but the whole Red Bull group. And, uh, you know, that lives on today. And, um, you know, the passion, uh, the determination, the fact that, you know, we're mavericks, we're pushing the boundary, we're doing things differently. And then, you know, hence we're here are the only team to announce in, in, in the U.S. And, uh, you know, we're getting on with uh, and preparing for the season ahead. We're very exciting uh, about it. We've got tremendous support from, from Red Bull and the shareholders and uh, uh, looking see forward to this, this busy season in 2023. Uh, I was going to ask you, what are, what's your perspective for 2023 with Red Bull and Honda? Well, it's going to be a, a, an incredible season. Our, our rivals, you know, for sure, um, you know, haven't stood still. So, you know, we're expecting you know, Ferrari to be competitive. Mercedes uh, are going to be there. You know, there's some other teams that could well make some big progress as well. So this time of year, it's, it's all a big unknown. And it's a question of focusing on ourselves, on doing the best that we can. And then in Bahrain, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll get to see everybody's, uh, everybody's car. And we'll realize, you know, have we missed something? Have we not? And then we set off on this 23 race journey between, you know, March and November. And, uh, you know, there's going to be highs and lows along the way, I'm sure. But I think we're in a good place and looking to carry on that momentum from last year. As we noted just a moment ago, one of the most impressive parts of 2022 was the fact that you guys started in the top four in every single Grand Prix during the season. Define for me what that means like what is the challenge to achieve that well, i think consistency is incredibly important and i think that you know what we achieved last year with you know, 17 victories out of 22 races two out of the three sprint races you know we hit a level that we haven't you know previously and with both drivers you know delivering was uh, a, f a phenomenal performance and i think that we're going to have to be at the top of our game this year um, because, you know, the, the drivers, the teams that we're up against, you know, they're, they're hugely competitive and skillful teams. So, um, you know, we're going to have to be at the top of our game 
uh, this season. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. You know, it's been a good winter. It's been a chance to recharge the batteries, get focused on the regulation change for this year, some subtle changes you know, with the cars for this year. But, you know, everybody's ready to go racing again. And what can you share with us about Grand Toro 2023? I know it's a huge initiative. Yeah, it's a big initiative. It's something that uh, we did in Europe um, last year, which is basically, uh, well, it's, it, I don't think you can call it a rally, but it's um, a bunch of enthusiasts in, in very nice cars going from, from um, the UK to Austria last year. We're doing that, we're gonna do that again in Europe. Um, and we're gonna do a, a, a road trip as well from, um, you know, in the build up to, to the Vegas race from uh, Los Angeles across. So that's a, that's a great initiative. We met some great people and fans of the team on that and the drivers are gonna get involved. Um, you know, Daniel and David Coulthard will be getting involved in that. Really appreciate your perspective, your leadership of the program. Thank you so much, Christian. We'll see much more of you here in just a bit. Right now, folks, let's take a moment to celebrate some of the athletes from the world of Red Bull. As one of the most visible sponsors in extreme sports globally, Red Bull is an energy drink that broke the mold of what's expected from a brand. Now, please welcome Red Bull athletes, Eileen Gu, Miles Chamley Watson, Seth Powell, and Leticia Buffoni. So let's start with you, Eileen. Uh, at only 19 years old, you're Olympic champion, professional freestyle skier. I would like to highlight some of your, uh, that you have some of the highlights of your career. You're the youngest Olympic champion in freestyle skiing one of only a handful free skiers to compete in all three disciplines, and first freestyle skier to win three medals at a single Winter Olympic. Welcome. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I love F1 so much, and it's really exciting to be, such a, be a part of this monumental event um, and to share it with all these incredible athletes. Now, Tim, um, you know, Red Bull Racing just won two championships in a row, something pretty difficult to achieve. What's the key in your sport that allows you to, keep, to continue to perform at the top level? Absolutely. I think sports are so physical, right? But a huge part of it really is mental. And a lot of people sometimes overlook that. There's so much mental training that goes into it. Learning to deal with pressure. Learning to love pressure. Learning to overcome it. And learning to be the best version of yourself when the world is watching. And I think that's something that Red Bull does so well. Because Red Bull strikes this incredible balance of both symbolizing the epitome of everything that action sports are, while also building this family and this sense of community. So we all love what we do so much. We're all the best in the world at it, and somehow we're all best friends with each other. So that's something that's really incredible. You talk about balance, and tell, please tell me, how do you balance and prioritize all the aspects of your life? From being a professional athlete, a model, attending Stanford, you seem to be equally driven in all of these activities. <laughs> I'm actually in my midterms right now. Um, I wrote my philosophy paper on the way over on the red eye. So that's how I balance it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think for me, everything comes down to passion. I love fashion because I think it's so personal and expressive. And it's a way that I can really be myself through the way that I look. On the other hand, I think skiing really embodies those same traits, but in the way that I feel, in the way that I ski, in the way that I am in the air. And then finally, school to me is, it's the cognitive aspect, it's the intellectual aspect, it's the way I approach all the other things. And that's what allows me to deal with pressure. It's what allows me to love fashion and to really nerd out about all the materials and the designers. And everything really is interconnected for me and truly it comes down to the fact that I love everything I do. They balance each other out really well and it won't let me get burned out. Good. Now welcome to world, two-time world champion and 2016 Team Olympic medalist in fencing, Miles Chandler Watson. Hi, how are you, Miles? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's uh, lovely to be here back in cold New York uh, for a lovely event, so thanks again. Miles, tell me, how is Red Bull different from other companies that partner with athletes? 
Um, well, Red Bull's definitely, they were the first sponsor to ever sign me, but they definitely care about the athletes. You know, they ask us questions. Um, they've been, you know, helping me build and change the sport. Um, and they're very, you know, encouraging and always behind me, which is something that, as a partner, I always look to have. Uh, and they're just amazing people. And it's not really a sponsorship, it's a family, which is, I think, everybody up here, you know, I love, I see them around the world, and it's like truly a family. So that's how they're different in many ways. Now tell me, what attracted to you to have one? Um, I mean, as a kid growing up in London, I've always loved F1. I've always loved driving fast. Um, and I'm, I'm obviously heavily invested. And I just think what they do is, it's honestly incredible. And then when you get to see it up close, you really get to see that they do put their lives on the line. Um, and I think the TV doesn't do justice. So like when you go and see a race, you really see like how mad they are. And it's really incredible to see. So, yeah. Perfect. Now, next up fresh of X Games in Espen is 23-year-old Seb Powell. Hi, Seb. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? All good. Thank you. Can you describe your unique style of riding? And please explain me what is the knucklehawk. Um, so my unique style of riding is it's a lot different from normal snowboarders because of pretty much how spontaneous it is. I could have an idea of what I want to do, dropping into a jump or rail or whatever, but the second I get up to it, or I'm about to take off, eh, I could completely switch what I'm gonna do, and that's what makes it so spontaneous and unique. And the knuckle hug, that is? So for knuckle hug, um, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like, so pretty much instead of using the jump, um, you use the landing. So like, this is the knuckle pretty much, and do you need it. to use my hand to explain <laughs> it? Yeah. So you got the jump here, yeah. usually, uh -huh. but you take off right here instead, and like this gives you a little pocket of air, or, what, or not air, but like you can manipulate um, your body and use your board to like flip and spin in certain ways that you can't do on a normal jump because you don't go as high in the air, pretty much. Okay, and now please tell us about the sliding tour, an event that you created to promote inclusion and aims to make the mountain more colorful. So sliding tour, um, Red Bull gave me the opportunity to pretty much give some energy back to the East Coast. Um, it's where snowboarding started, so it's birthplace. A lot of events are like all over the world and um, we're on the West Coast. So there's not much energy on the East Coast, so we pretty much go to mountains, shoot, um, film on rails, jumps, and invite um, all the people, like all the locals to come snowboard with us. And it's pretty cool because we didn't really, um, it, er, sorry. It's pretty cool because um, we just, it gave me this niche that I didn't know I had, which is just riding with a lot of them, a lot of people. And um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting what I'm saying. It gave me this niche of pretty much inviting. It's like it, it welcomes people to um, <laughs> um, what is the word? Oh, I'm, it's like pretty much <laughs> getting involved just, with the sport. Yeah, um, like we have kids pretty much come out and it, it's like you just make them feel welcome and ride yeah. with them. It's not really just a session for us, it's a session for them, and it like, pretty much, we just, pretty much have as much fun as possible, and it makes them feel really involved with the sport, and um, just a lot of fun. Sounds great. And now, welcome six-time X Games skateboarding gold medalist, Letitia Buffoni, an icon in women's skateboarding. Hi, Letitia, how are you? I'm good, how are you? All good, thank you. You competed in the Tokyo Olympics where skateboarding debuted. Please tell me about the emotions of being there. Man, it was crazy. I never thought in my life I'd be competing in the Olympics and representing my country. And it was just, it was amazing. It was a lot of nerves and I want to do it again because it was amazing. Now, we saw your recent sky grain video. Please tell me how to come up with, prepare for it. It was crazy. Oh my God. It was a dream of mine that I had about five years ago. And I brought to Red Bull, they loved the idea and of they course. wanted to do it. Uh, it took us a long time to prepare and organize everything. I had to train a lot. I had to do over 100 jumps for the actual jump. And it was a lot of work, but we made it somehow. Worth it. It was, it was amazing, yeah. It was, it was a dream come true. Cool. 
Eileen, uh, you attended last year the Monaco Grand Prix and Miami. Tell me about the experience of being in those Grand Prix. Well, I'm a huge adrenaline addict. I think everybody <laughs> on this stage is. But really, seeing it in person truly is so different. The drivers are going so fast. I can't even imagine moving at that speed. And having to make reactions just like that, it really shows how you have to be so dialed in. You almost have to be subconscious and functioning as though you and the car, the driver and the car are one. And that is just something that I admire so much. I admire excellence in any field, but in a sport like F1, I really, 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 I love watching mm -hmm. and I have so much respect for the drivers. Miles, you were too in Miami and you did an, an Instagram takeover. So tell me about that. And are you planning to attend to another race this year? Uh, yeah, so Miami was so hot, my yeah. God. Um, I definitely love uh, going to races. I'll definitely be at more. Um, I think we can settle the dispute that F1 drivers are athletes. So if I hear this again, okay, they are fully athletes because it's so crazy what they do. Um, and I hope to go to Vegas um, for the race. Definitely hope I make it back. So Red Bull, I'll be there. <laughs> um, and yeah. And Instagram. Oh, yes. Oh. Instagram yeah. will be there too, but yeah. it was a nice little takeover to kind of show the fans and people that watched it what really goes on at the races, you know, how it's a huge team and it's not just like the drivers. So I think it was cool to show the different, you know, perspective. So it was lovely. So I'll definitely be back again. Perfect. Seb, how was Miami for you? Rumors said that you're going back this year. I'm definitely going back. That was actually so much fun. Um, I've never been to a race either. And um, to show up and kind of see how it goes and like, see how they operate? It's all so intense. Like, we were at the end of the mile stretch in Miami, and I had no idea. They, they like, literally sound like jets coming down, and then they do, like, almost a 90-degree turn. And, like, just to slow down to that speed after going, like, jet speed was crazy to see. We got to go to the paddock, too, and to see all, how they all operate, like, how top secret it is in there, too. It was all really cool to see, and um, we'd love to do it some more. And what about you, Leticia? Tell me about the experience in Miami. I've been to many races, but Miami was definitely my favorite. I think just everything about Miami, the weather, <laughs> you didn't like it, uh, the parties, everything about it was beautiful. I can't wait to go back. Good. Well, let's thank to you all for joining us here today and enjoy the races you will attend this upcoming season. And please keep pushing. Uh, all the limits on the world sports. Let's check in with Marty. What do you have, Marty? It's so inspiring to hear the amazing paths that those awesome Red Bull athletes have taken to the pinnacle of their sports and to see how committed Red Bull continues to be in the world of extreme sports and learn about it from those amazing athletes themselves. Oracle Red Bull Racing continues to put fans at the forefront of everything they do. 2023 will be no exception. Let's take a look at someone else who's getting involved. How cool is that? I mean, that is, that is cool, and I'm actually a little disappointed. I got to be honest. I thought Christian was going to show up today wearing that suit. <laughs> yeah, it was Why didn't you get that suit, man? You'd look fantastic right. in that suit. It is time now uh, to talk about an exciting opportunity for all of you at home to get more involved with Oracle Red Bull Racing than ever before. We're launching a competition called Make Your Mark, powered by Oracle. Christian, what more can you tell us about this initiative? Well, this is very much about getting the fans involved in uh, the livery and the look of the car. So for the, uh, the three U.S. races that we have this year, for the, for the first time ever, we're going to get the fans involved to uh, create 
the livery for those three races. It's going to be a competition. It's a huge opportunity, and we've thought long and hard about it. But we know uh, it's what people want to want to see to be able to get involved. And this is your chance uh, to be able to do that. So for the first race, obviously, U.S. race in May in Miami. Um, the competition opens, uh, I think, today. Um, and uh, to you know, get involved and come up with some interesting liveries that there'll be then a, a panel of judges and, uh, and we'll pick out the best and most striking ones for, for these three How iconic fun. races. How fun. I mean, what an awesome initiative to get the fans even more involved than, they, than, than they've, they've ever been. For more information on this, guys, uh, make your mark. You can, be, you can go to the paddock and no doubt across social media you'll see so much more on this initiative in the foreseeable future. Head to redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock to find out more. Absolutely awesome, awesome opportunity for the fans. It sounds amazing and definitely I'm going to get on board. Something special happening here with Mr. Doodle and the RB14 show car, right? Yeah, so we saw the, the video of Mr. Doodle there um, taking one of our uh, you know, old show cars and, and he's done a unique uh, livery on it. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty special. It's a piece of art. Now that, we're going to auction that car for you know, our charity, our nominated charity, Wings for Life. Uh, and every single penny um, from that auction for that car um, is going to go to the charity. So the auction, again, is going to open. I think it opens today um, through Christie's. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, it's going to look great in somebody's living room. Um, <laughs> Yours? Or it's on somebody's wall. I mean, it's a fantastic... <laughs> Piece of, a piece of art you'd have to stay in. I mean, this guy, he's doodled his entire house. Uh, he lives in a house that looks like Did that. Did he do so, your house? Um, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, Max was, you know, saw him doing it, was hugely impressed. So uh, maybe he's going to put in a bit as well. So what you're telling me is when you guys get to Miami, it's Max who's going to be wearing that suit. Well, <laughs> you, you, you never know. But uh, yeah, look, this is a, a really cool initiative to, to buy you know, one of our former cars, they're not, you know, we don't sell many, many cars. It is a show car, but, you know, in this unique uh, doodle livery um, and every single penny going towards, you know, Wings for Life that's looking to find a cure for spinal cord uh, injury and damage. I love that it benefits Wings for Life. That is, that is wonderful. Okay, guys, now we're going to hang out with a very special person and we're going to welcome him back home to the world of Oracle Red Bull Racing. It's our boy, and we're happy to have him back. Please, let's give a big round of applause and welcome back eight-time Grand Prix winner and one of the friendliest drivers in the F1 grid, Daniel Ricciardo to Oracle Red Bull Racing. Daniel, you spent uh, the first decade of your Formula One career with Red Bull. Now you're back as a third driver. How does it feel to be back in this stage? Feels amazing. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it feels, yeah, it's like returning home, you know, and uh, after uh, kind of uh, in this now like second, kind of second phase of my career, uh, it feels warm and cozy. A lot of familiar faces, and uh, yeah, back in the family, a lot of, lot of fond memories. Can you explain us a little bit more about this new role that you will have with the team? Yes, yeah, so I'll do, I'll attend some races, obviously, and, and it's really just to help also develop the car, use my experience, a lot of simulator work, and, um, and yeah, just keep, keep involved uh, in the sport, obviously, keep, keep a close eye on what's happening, and uh, try and obviously help the team as much as possible. Uh, more, more obviously behind the scenes, but uh, yeah, when I'm trackside as well, I'll get, uh, get nice and close to all the engineers and find out uh, yeah, where I can help and, and contribute. What was your reaction watching Max and Oracle Red Bull Racing winning a back-to-back -back world championship in 2022 and the addition of the Constructors title? I mean, uh, at the time, I was definitely envious because I was you know, <laughs> competing uh, against them last year. But it was, it was really, honestly, really cool to see. And, you know, the start of the season was like nip and tuck, you know, with uh, the battle with Ferrari as well. And then the way that uh, Red Bull was able just to kind of continue to press on through the year and, and ultimately dominate what, it, what looked like really the second half of the season was really impressive. You know, so many 
members of the team I, I worked with and I was so, so happy for, and uh, really cool to see them back on top. You are the first person we haven't seen this year in real, in person, uh -huh. wearing the new Castor kit, the kit that you will be using in 2023. So please tell me about this kit. What are your thoughts on this Castor kit? Maybe you can... Do you want model? me to model? Yeah. Da -na 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 -na. Great. I, well, as you can see, it's, it's very flexible, very um, usable, <laughs> wearable. Uh, so no, it, look, it looks great. I mean, for me as well, like putting the Red Bull uniform back on, obviously it's a new Castor one as well, but just, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a happy feeling for me, certainly some strong like nostalgia and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think we look good. Uh, I did a workout in it this morning. Not really, we had an early start, but I'll do a workout later and let you know how it is. <laughs> it's really good, you look great. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for being here with us. It's a pleasure to see you back with the team. And right now, let's take a look at the 2023 brand shoot. True to form, Oracle Red Bull Racing got found symbol, making them one of the first people, besides Daniel, of course, that were uh, lucky enough to wear the new Castor team wear for 2023. Our fans were also treated to a sneak peek of the new range of caps and footwear developed by the team by US-based pioneers New Era and APL. What a lineup. Let's check it out. Everyone's excited. You're competing against the best in the world. Same goal. It's about winning. For me, the most important thing is that I can be myself and really express myself. It's about what people don't see. Like they say, it's what you do in the shadow. It definitely is a very big team effort. At the end of the day, it's all to try and push the team forward. They give everything. We are all in that car, although I'm driving. What do we have here? New team kit. That's exactly what you want. We're gonna be pretty fresh. Still, you know, growing, learning, getting more experience um, on track, off track, in general, in life. But to be honest, my goal uh, is just to try and be better again. I'm gonna give my best throughout the year. Try to be a good example for the younger generations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the stars of the show are here. Say hello to two-time defending Formula One world champion Max Verstappen, Checo Perez, and of course we welcome back Christian Horner, team principal as well. Checo, I want to start with you. Welcome to New York, man. What should it tell us that Oracle Red Bull decided to have the season launch right here in the United States of America? Yeah, well, I think it's growing so much in the U.S., the support for, for our team. Uh, everywhere where we go, you know, we have already three races in the U.S., and we can see that definitely we're getting a lot of support. We're becoming the favorite team uh, of this country, which is great. So, yeah, we're very privileged to have so much support from, from the U.S. Max, it's one thing to win one world championship. Obviously, it's a dream, but to defend it is an entirely different challenge. Why were you and your team able to do that? Uh, well, I mean, of course, we did last year, but um, yeah, we're just very excited to, um, you know, to come here. We know, like Checo said, the U.S. is incredibly important to us. We are going to have three races now this year. I think we're all very much um, looking forward to, and uh, they're also very different to, to, to each other, you know. So, um, yeah, to, to be here today um, and also from our side, you know, we're very optimistic again for, for this year. And, of course, you know, we're going to try to, uh, to defend that title. Checo, as we discussed earlier with Christian, um, you guys were the only team to, have, to start in the top four in every Grand Prix of 2020. What's the challenge of accomplishing that? Yeah, definitely it's to keep progressing. You know, the competition is getting better, and so we have to keep progressing. We have to be better than we were last year, and that's going to be really difficult. Uh, but as a team, we, we're giving everything. You know, it's been a very busy winter for, for all of us. So we're really looking forward to the start of the season. 
One of your main jobs, Christian, is to try to achieve something that resembles harmony within the organization. What is the challenge when you have two world-class championship caliber teams battling against one another to maintain that harmony? Well, we're, we're very lucky. We've got two, two fantastic drivers, and uh, you know, their combined efforts the last two years have been, been stunning. Obviously, you know, that first Drivers' World Championship for Max in 21, and then you know, the, uh, the double championship last year, and uh, you know, winning 17 Grand Prix between the two of them, and uh, you know, first and third in, uh, in, in the Drivers' Championship, and of course, bringing home that Constructors' Championship back to Oracle Rebel Racing for the first time in eight years. And uh, you, you know, these guys... Uh, you know, it's, I think it's the best pairing we've ever had in, in Formula One. It's uh, been hugely successful, and um, you know we're going to need every bit of that this year as we go against some some big opponents. Um, you know, with uh, you know with the other teams looking to come back at us uh, after you know such a dominant dominant season last year. But uh, you know we're very fortunate to have two two such talented drivers. Max, you don't strike me as someone who rests very much. You seem to continue to want to push and find the maximum performance within yourself. But as you have reflected on back-to-back -back championships, how do you define what you've achieved so far? Um, yeah, of course, uh, it's been great. Um, when you're a little kid and you're working towards your, your dream, your goal, first of all, that is to try and become a Formula 1 driver. Then, of course, the next steps are about trying to win a race, you know, put the car on pole, and then eventually the big dream is, of course, to win a championship. And uh, once I, I achieved that, of course, for me, like, um, a lot of pressure fell off my, my shoulders because I felt like I had every, like, achieved everything I wanted um, in my sporting career. But then it's all about trying to stay there because that's probably even harder than getting there. Um, and that's why I think last year was a very good test, you know, to see if we could do that. But also from my side, you know, I constantly try to, to improve myself because nobody is perfect. And I think throughout, <clears throat> throughout your whole career, I think you are always improving learning uh, from just general life experiences, but also on track. You know, there are always things that you can do better. And that's always what I'm, I'm questioning myself, asking myself, where can I be better? And that's, of course, what I'll try to do again this year. Best of luck. Uh a tremendous season ahead uh, with so much promise. What are you most looking forward to in the coming season? Well, definitely to have a, a good time with the team and to improve what we've done last year. And um, yeah, I think if we're able to do that, then it will be a, a great season. You know, it's such a long, long year ahead that they, they, we, we just have to be, make sure we are full of energy, which we are fully recharged and ready to go for, for this new season. Well, what you've built is a championship expectation now. So how do you define success in 2023 for this program? Well, it's a, a different situation for us, you know, defending those titles. We go from being the, the hunter to the hunted. And I think that, uh, you know, everybody in the team is, is so motivated and, and fully up for this challenge. I think, you know, having tasted that success last year, you know, some subtle regulation changes for this year, um, you know, everybody back in the factory is, is just pushing flat out and uh, you know we're excited to see the car for the run for the first time um, only three days of testing before we go racing um, and and then you know as these guys say it's it's gonna be nine months traveling around the world uh, you know racing at all these different venues and uh, it's gonna be I, I think an incredibly competitive year this year for both of you here in the United States we're seeing this explosion of popularity in Formula One how do you describe the global passion of the F1 fan base? Um, well, I think, you know, new ownership um, definitely focused more on the, on the US as well because we knew that we were definitely lacking there still. So they definitely have done an incredible job in, in boosting it in the US. And then, of course, also through Netflix. I guess everyone in here has Netflix. So um, They're we, here. Uh, They're here somewhere, <laughs> brother. Yeah, I signed well, my life away. <laughs> you watch a lot of Netflix, right? So, <laughs> of course, having the series on, on Netflix helped a lot to get a bit more of an insight of, of everyone's uh, racing career because it always felt like probably F1 was quite a closed environment you couldn't really get into. So when you have a bit more behind the scenes, uh, like cameras and footage, I think that, uh, that helped a lot that you can see a little bit more of the, the personality behind it as well. When you go home to Mexico, it is crazy. How do you describe the passion of the fans. Yeah, certainly. The, the passion uh, of the sport has grown a lot. You know, like Max says, you know, I think certainly Netflix has, has put the people, the fans, a little bit closer to, to the drivers, to the teams. They're more into what we go through, you know, because we go through so much for 
nine months a year. You know, uh, we have good days, bad days, so we show a lot of emotions. And the fans are always with us, you know, so we are very privileged to, to have them and the, to, to receive the support we get, you know. So, yeah, I'm extremely lucky to have the amount of support I, I get around the, around the world and especially here in the U.S. Love it. Christian, what is the team's plan for show runs in 2023? Well, we've got a, a, a busy, um, you know, a, a events ahead of us. Got, I think we're doing about 20 show runs. So, uh, you know, Daniel um, being back in the team, he's going to be driving at all kinds of different venues. And, uh, you know, this includes two in the U.S. Um, they're going to be announced, uh, you know, in Chicago and Nashville. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to taking Formula One to the people. And, uh, you know, the show runs have been tremendously successful in terms of just exposing Formula One, seeing these cars where you wouldn't expect to see them and, uh, you know, lighting up the streets in Chicago and Nashville is going to be a, a lot of fun this year. Really appreciate your perspective, gentlemen. Thank you so much. And I got to tell you, Christian, Daniel Ricardo let loose in Nashville, Tennessee, unsupervised is a scary, scary thing. Oracle Red Bull Racing has always pushed the limits on where to go next. Let's take a look at the ultimate road trip across America from Oracle Red Bull Racing. Initiate car drop, Manhattan, Nevada. Max, they've dropped the car off in the wrong Manhattan. I need a car in New York in 36 hours. You got it, boss. to race the streets. It's going to be even better when there's no traffic ahead of you. Max, get to Austin and hand over the checker. Hell yeah. Thanks for Stafford. You are world champion. We are world champion. Thanks, amigo. Checo, we need you at the launch. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Go over there, brother. I'm sure it looks like a championship car. That is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful racing yeah. machine. I like the matte finish on it. Christian, what more can you tell us about the RB19? Um, well, obviously, the regulations are very stable, so it's taking all the lessons from you know, the, uh, the, the, the RB18 that was, of course, you know, our most successful ever car. There's been some subtle aerodynamic changes uh, that affect all of the teams. And so, uh, you know, harnessing and trying to optimize those um, is one of the challenges. The tires are slightly different as well this year within the, the new regulations, but uh, RB19 draws on all uh, the strengths, hopefully, from what uh, was, as I say, our most successful ever car. Max, what were your thoughts on the first time that you saw the RB19? 
It's right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I think our livery, you know, has been pretty similar for a couple of years now. But I actually, you know, always find it a cool-looking car. It really shows you, you know, the Red Bull colors all over the place. And, um, you know, it, it, we have had a lot of success like that. So why do we need to change it up a lot? Of course, we have a few more partners on, on the car, a few new partners as well. And that's where it's all about. Checo, what's the testing process for you guys as you prepare for the season opener in Bahrain, March 3rd? Yeah, for now, it's, it's about getting up to, the, to, the, to a good physical level before the season starts because it's a very short time that we get in the car. We're going to be having just a day and a half uh, each in the car before the season starts. So it's really how much you can do now and, uh, and the work you do with the engineers for now. And um, that's, that's the, the key, you know, that's uh, the most you can do. Daniel, what about the same work that you'll be doing back in the factory? Uh, we were just talking about it, actually. So, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be there uh, in a couple of weeks getting, getting ready for the season and a lot of sim work. I mean, that'll be a lot of, uh, let's say, my work and my contribution and uh, let the boys take the track stuff and, and I'll be working, uh, yeah, behind the scenes and, again, try to just develop the car, help understand the direction also that, that Checo and Max want to take it and, uh, yeah, try and lend some of my experience as well to, to the track and, and the engineers. Max, have you done any testing in it yet? Have you done any testing at all in that um, yet? <clears throat> only on the simulator. What, what's, what are the differences? Yeah, I mean, you know, coming out of uh, last year, you get a bit of a picture of what you want from, from the car, what you want to improve. So that's what we try to do with this year's car. I cannot get into too many details about it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, you constantly just try to make it better. <laughs> and that's what you're working on. Um, on. On the simulator, you try to really, you know, get, get the reference between the simulator and the real track. You try to correlate it as well as you can. And uh, yeah, that's a continuous process. But uh, the first feelings have been, uh, have been really good. Checo, now that you've seen the car, uh, what are the, mo the, the things that you expected the most for the 2023 season? Well, once you get to see your new car, you really get excited and you really uh, realize that, it, that the season is about to start. So I'm looking forward to, to it. You know, it's going to be a very long season, plenty of races. So, so for me, I think it's very important, you know, Bahrain, to get to, to meet the car, see how it is. And, and hopefully we have a very first good introduction because that, that will set up to, to a great year. Daniel, you've had quite a journey uh, from the last time that you were with the Red Bull team. How are you different? How have you evolved since you left here four years ago? Well, I think you, I mean, every year in the sport, you learn so much and I feel like you grow up a lot quicker as well. Um, I mean, I'm still immature, but like in other ways, <laughs> you grow up. And uh, yeah, it's like I've gone through, you know, in, in, that, in that time since 2018, uh, gone through some challenges, you know, certainly uh, some things I was, you know, uh, let's say proud of and, and learned a lot from, but also, uh, yeah, challenging times and the, uh, you know, like character building stuff where you have to dig deep and kind of find, find yourself a little bit. Uh, so yeah, to come uh, back into the Red Bull family and back to familiar ground. It's, uh, I think it's really perfect for me for, for this season and looking forward to uh, you know, a different looking year for me. Great to see you back here, man. Hmm. Love you. your spirit so much. What an unbelievable show so far. We've already covered so much. Fans designing the RB19 for all three US races. A welcome back to our favorite Aussie, Danny Rick, and a first look at the RB19. So much excitement for the upcoming season. What more can we take? Well, Marty, we know that 2026 will be, we'll see F1 next big step change. And today we have some exciting news to reveal for the team's future. Let's take a look at a special message for the Ford Motor Company.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome now the president and CEO of Ford Motor Company, Jim Farley. This is huge news to round out our launch event here in New York. Here he comes, as you can see, in a Red Bull themed E Ford. Jim, good morning. Morning. How you doing, man? I'm doing a, I'm doing great. Welcome. With all these people, it's fantastic. I know you all own Fords, right? It is fantastic, and I'm just <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna give you to the floor to share your news. Jim, you're first. Well, uh, I have to say, Ford is gonna return to Formula One after more than 20 years, and uh, we looked at a lot of options uh, as good business people and we wanted to go in the direction that was authentic to us. So we've decided to have a strategic partnership and a technical partnership with Red Bull powertrains to enter Formula One in 2026. And uh, we want to help Kristen and these fantastic drivers, the whole Red Bull racing team to deliver the goods on the track. It's a huge moment for the Ford family around the world. We have almost 200,000 employees and uh, we are really excited to engage a whole new generation of customers with our electric vehicles. So it's a, a big deal for us. We're really excited about the sustainable direction of the sport. Uh, we're on the same mission at Ford, and we cannot wait to go racing with you, Kristen. Fantastic. What are your thoughts on the partnership? Well, look, I mean, this is tremendously exciting. It's a, it's a big moment for us, for, for our team, for, for Red Bull Powertrains as we've started on this journey for 2026 and to welcome the Ford brand back into Formula One. You know, to become a Red Bull Ford you know, engine and power unit is going to be incredibly exciting. And for us, having the ability to draw on your experience, your, your EV knowledge and, uh, and, and just depth of resource is uh, you know, tremendously exciting. And I think from the first moment that we, that we met and spoke yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and with Bill Ford as well, um, yes. it was very clear that there was, uh, you know, a natural synergy between uh, the, the two companies. And it was a very uh, easy deal to put together because yeah. the desire was there from both sides. So, uh, you know, we're incredibly excited in this next chapter for, for Red Bull um, as we bring the power unit in-house, um, you know, with your support. So it's uh, yeah, a big moment for us. And uh, right. I know that Alpha Tori is also involved in this, correct? Well, it's, it's the power unit supply. So Red Bull powertrains you know, will be supplying both teams in, um, in 2026. So it's, you know, 2026 seems like a long way away, but it's in engine world, it's tomorrow. So we've got a lot of ground to cover, uh, you know, in, in a three-year period from a startup. We're drawing, we've recruited some incredible talent. We've got some great people within the team. And now to be able to draw on uh, you know, all of Ford's uh, expertise and knowledge. And, uh, you know, Jim's a racer as, as, as well. He's, uh, so he's got that racing spirit. Um, and I think with Jim and Bill um, behind this project, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about what we can achieve. Well, Ford's commitment to greatness in racing is, is obvious uh, in other forms, and it will be obvious here. Yes, sir. Great to see you, Jim. Guys, I also heard on the street, I mean, the word is, is that Max and Checo have already been having a little fun in Ford's electric vehicles. Let's take a look. Max, I don't know much, man, but it looked like that super van could go, brother. What was it like driving that thing? Yeah, that was a, a crazy experience. I mean, it was a very cold day, but um, I got out there, and I have to say, zero to 200, unbelievable. Um, I think it was accelerating faster than a Formula One car, so uh, <laughs> it was incredible. Four-wheel drive, but I was still having wheel spin, so uh, yeah, it was good. It was a, a very fun day as well. Checo, you had the chance to drive the incredible Mac E 1400 in Atlanta. How did it go? Yeah, I had a lot of fun in, in Road Atlanta. Actually, it was a great track, and uh, it was really funny. 
And uh, yeah, the, the amount of power you get through, through the four wheels, it, it was pretty impressive. And um, yeah, I was pretty shocked also with the amount of downforce we had. So it was a great preparation for the season. And Max, what experience did you got with the Ford cards? Yeah, it was a great experience. Like we had a few models there and um, also the F-150 Lightning. I think the Mackie was there basically like it is there. And uh, yeah, um, I got to experience it all, you know, the power, but also the comfort. Um, so yeah, it was a, a great day. I got everything was exp like it was explained well to me. And um, the funny thing for me also to find out was that um, the F-150 um, that if you have a problem with your house and you have no power, it can power your house for three days. So if I ever have an issue, I know what to do. <laughs> Good. How, how are they going to leave you out of this? What, what, what are they doing? What, what, what are you doing with the, the new Ford vehicle? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm off to Detroit next week, yeah. so uh, I'm sure we'll have a bit of fun there. And uh, my, one of my go-tos or my, uh, well, it's, yeah. I have a Raptor, so... That's what I was going <laughs> to yeah. say. I heard you had a Raptor. <laughs> I, I'm a truck guy, so... Yeah, I, uh, I bought a Raptor, yeah, like five, six years ago, and, uh, and I love it. So um, that's, that's a little bit of the, uh, the Aussie in me as well, you know, with a big, big kind of... We call them utes, but they're called trucks out here. You already poke and Jim to make sure that you get the best opportunity up there <laughs> at Ford in Detroit? Already. <laughs> He's uh, ready. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate your insight. Let's take a look at another video. Yeah, it really takes off. So cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more very special guest today here in New York City. Can you please extend a huge welcome to the head of Formula One himself, Mr. Stefano Domenicali. I don't see him coming, but I, he is here. Uh, <laughs> he's here somewhere. Is Stefano coming? Knock, knock. I, I knock, knock. Him. Is it Stefano? He's on the way. Yeah. He's okay, he's coming. He's coming. He's hiding. Yeah. In the meantime, yeah. uh, how, do you, how do you hope to be an ear and give some insight to these guys? I know you're going to spend a lot of time in the sim, too. Yeah, so also like on, on race weekends, you know, I'll listen in and I'll, uh, let's say, have a, if I'm not at the circuit, I'll have access to all the communications and... Um, you know, staying close with all the engineers and being on uh, chat channels with them and stuff and just finding out if there's anything, trying to figure out like what trends we're starting to see and because and, no, even if they're winning every race, like no car's perfect, you're always trying to chase something. So um, try and kind of understand the direction they want the car to, to go in and develop. And if I have an, an idea or something maybe I've learned in the last few years with, you know, racing with uh, other teams perhaps, try to lend, lend some guidance or advice or, or something for me to test in the simulator and, and try it and give feedback if it's uh, maybe positive. Yeah, I mean, look, for us to have three such quality drivers to bring Daniel back home, you know, after four years, uh, you know, he went on his, on his journey uh, via the other teams. So, but to bring him back, you know, to have these three such quality drivers, uh, it really does feel like, um, you know, we've got the strongest you know, line up on the grid. And, you know, Daniel's going to play a key role um, behind the scenes as well, uh, you know, commercially, as we uh, look to have a bigger footprint in the U.S. You know, he's going to be in Nashville and, and doing all kinds of different stuff as well. And obviously with tire testing, he'll get a bit of running in the car and be looking to support the two, uh, you know, race drivers with the experience that, that he has. So, uh, you know, it's, it's great for us to have that, you know, that in-house uh, in, in the team. So unfortunately, my friends, I've just learned from our, our group that, Stefano is not here. Uh, he will not be coming out. So uh, forgive me, he will not be here. But I did want to just continue with you guys just a moment. 
it's wonderful that Ford is re-entering the Formula One uh, arena. Walk us through what that initiative is for your company and how it unfolded with these guys. I think Ford is a really different company. I mean, Bill Ford, we have Ford family members here. It's a family company, and Bill was always committed to sustainability. Um, and it's about time that the management team catch up with his vision. I mean, our, our idea is we don't want to make generic cars. We don't make kind of the faceless vehicles. We want to have vehicles with an attitude. And this team represents that. And we want to win in the marketplace. But we want to go electric. And we want to, go, we want to be able to ship software to our cars to, to have someone go zero to 60 faster because we threw it, you know, we, we sent software to the car. Um, that digital product, that electric product's coming out in the next couple of years. And we're really excited to work with this team on the technology side and also learn from them. The best aerodynamicists in the world are in Formula One at Red Bull. And the most important thing about making a small battery, because the battery is so expensive, is aerodynamics. So we can learn a lot from Formula One, like we did in the 70s and 80s, but for a while it didn't, the tech didn't transfer. Now it can. So we want to take the technology and we also want to expose a whole new generation of Americans to EVs so that they're not this boring point A to point B cars, they're trucks and personality vehicles. That's the strategy of the company. Christian, this is a, such an exciting, exciting time to be in Red Bull uh, Racing. Can you tell us about how do you define the magnitude of this area in, for the team? Well, I think it's, it's a huge um, you know, era for, for the team. And of course, as we transition into these new regulations into 2026, for us strategically, it was really important to have you know, the right partner. As Formula One moves to you know, pretty much a 50-50 split between hybridization and and combustion power. And, and so for us, you know, setting out on that journey, we wanted to have a like-minded partner. And uh, you know, in Ford, with the commitment that you guys have got to, to the whole EV strategy and so on, um, you know, we've, we've found that. And uh, you know, it's great to see the Ford brand coming back into, into Formula One. Formula One is, is, is in such great shape at the moment with other manufacturers you know, joining us uh, as well in time for 2026. And the competition is going to be incredibly hot, but uh, I think the foundations that we're laying, um, you know, and the time that we have uh, in the build-up to 2026, we're, we're tremendously excited and very proud today to announce and welcome, you know, Ford uh, to, uh, to the Ripple family. Us too. Thank you guys all so much for your time today, for your perspective, your insight, your passion. Everyone here and everyone watching all across the world appreciates what you do and admires what all of you do. Thank you. It is wonderful that Ford is back in Formula One. The RB19 looks amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us today for the Oracle Red Bull Racing Season launch here in New York City. The team is very much looking forward to the 2023 season with the ultimate goal of fighting for another F1 World Championship. A reminder, for Red Bull Racing content, head online to the paddock. It's where you'll be able to watch race highlights, read driver interviews, and get up close with behind-the-scenes insight throughout the season. This is all waiting for you at redbullracing.com forward slash the paddock. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. On behalf of the Racing Team and our partners, thank you for watching.